Me try that on. Oh, no, no, no. I shouldn't be talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just coming around the corner and the boy got spooked. No, you swung at me. Boy, hit this pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Get angry, there's your right hand. 
everyone who can get angry, raise your right hand. I'm not trying to be truthful in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Anyone who can get angry, raise your right hand. You can get angry, raise your right hand. <coughs> or you can't get angry. Uh -huh. it's, not a, it's not a trick question. You also take the name. <laughs> if you can get angry, that's fine. But when you draw the line with anger, Because anger don't permit us not to sin. Because we sin in thoughts and in words and by our action. So anger does not stay where it does not affect our thoughts. How much of us try to get even in our thoughts but we smile? <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> How much, how much of us see that we already slapped the person with emotional ties attached to it? The emotional ties is when we're smiling and we're like, why are you smiling? You have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea what I'm doing in my mind. Oh, I killed you so many times. <laughs> And you're going to tell them, come on, hurry up, I need it. I need it. I need you to hurt me. Come on. No, we want the gateway to be open. We will not feel comfortable until the gateway opens. And the gateway is a key in our emotions. And because of how connected we are to it, because of how strong the hold is, we are going to find ourselves responding in darkness. Darkness has a fang. When it holds on, it does not let go. At what point are we going to get to a place in our life, which is called the day of God, when nothing, nobody says offends us anymore? Y'all don't try to talk back to me. I only have a few more minutes again. At one point, we're going to get to a place in our walk with God when nothing nobody says offends us anymore. 
or we're going to still be wrestling with those ideas that I've, I've got to suffer this, I've got to go through this, this is what's happening with me, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm going to be struggling with this or struggling with that. We don't realize that according to God's day, that's not where God wants us to be. When we keep wrestling with it, watch this, if I flip the switch, it's like coming to church. I have all that beautiful, wonderful feeling. Oh, I feel so blessed. God spoke to me. But the darkness is still sitting there to talk to us. Mm. And it's just a matter of an event. Let one event happen. And it will make the light seem as if it never came on. <coughs> Let one event happen that triggers one of darkness, those things that darkness <laughs> has in it. And it will make the light as if it never came on. Disobedience. Oh boy. There are some folks you can't talk to them. It don't matter what you tell them. You can say the color is blue, the blue is color. And they're going to get hot about it. It don't matter what you tell them. And this, this disobedience is a gateway funneled by anger. Unresolved issues. Things that we say is all right. <coughs> Lying to yourself and oh, you offend me and let's, let's deal with it. Bring it on in. This has to be dealt with. Because if I leave it, I am only causing an eternal problem to happen. Disobedience is a gateway funneled by anger. Make no, you see that thing, unforgiveness? In the day of God, nothing nobody does that you cannot forgive. It doesn't matter. Forgiveness means there is no residue of what the person did. Oh, that kind of a language is too much. I can forgive you, but I can't forget you. I can forgive, but I will never forget how you did it. Then you have never forgiven. Because forgiveness in the day of God is never happened. It never happened. I am free from that assault. So, in totality, watch this. He says in verse 8, what you got to put on, because you're not children of Darkness. Your children of the light. Your children of God's day. Watch this in verse 8. But let us who are of the day, not of light only, but of the day, be sober, be that diligent, be that forceful about putting on the breastplate of faith. Not only that, but put on love. In other words, there is nothing nobody could do to you that's going to put you in that place of darkness anymore. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Because I'm wearing love as my clothing. Hallelujah. I am so covered in love that there's nothing you can put on this garment. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm so clothed that nothing you do could make me look bad in the light of God's day. Oh, Jesus. Because I put on something that you cannot touch. Oh, hallelujah. Now I watch y'all for dinners and stuff like that. I watch how y'all behave when we have our gala, gala dinner. Oh, boy, you come out in fine style. And some of them, these younger bucks, you know what they do? They come purposefully late. Because they want to make a grand entrance. But someone said, wow, you look fine. Because to them, they are well sorted. And watch me, here cut. Women are not bad, you know. I think women are better than men without good. Men are addicted. When we go to cut our hair, we want everything to line up. <laughs> women don't have these problems. Men have problems that you have to line up. Right? It has to line up. Well, he don't have more lines. <laughs> In this case, nothing must be coming out. <laughs> In both your cases, you cannot have it coming out. No, you have to get it off. I am coming there sometime. 
I'll join you sometime. But while Just For Men is here, I'll be hold on for just a little while longer. Glory to God. The, bo <laughs> the bottom line is, be clothed. But being clothed in the garment of God is being transported into the day of God. I, I thought that was real good. <laughs> being clothed in the garments of God is being transported into the day of God. And in the day of God, I live in the light of God's day. In the light of God's day, love, gentleness, kindness, Meekness, the fruit of the spirit, is not foreign from my way of living. Hallelujah. I can live in the light of God's day, knowing that nothing, nobody does, can offend me. You've lost the right and the hold to offend me. I am beyond that kind of living. So I said, well, I'm not there yet. Uh -huh. The reason why we are not there yet is because we have made a decision to have darkness linger on. We made a conscious decision that I prefer to have darkness wrap his hands around me and then cover it by light. Let darkness live as long as it can, but keep the light covering darkness. Christianity is not a life of darkness. Christianity is not a life of darkness. It's a life of living in the light of God's day. I wish I could say it like that again. Christianity is living in the light of God's day. Not struggling with what is right and wrong. Or living today, God, tomorrow, devil. When someone upset me, I give vent to my feeling. And after that, then I turn to God for, for the, oh Lord, forgive me, you know, Lord. No. The purposes of God is not descriptive by circumstances. That's not what God does. He doesn't trade on your circumstance to get your attention like that. The reason why things happen is because we are still struggling with light and darkness. Coming to the house of God should not be because I need to show up. Or I just need to be identified with. But when I'm out there, you can't tell who is who. Oh, you can't tell when I'm on the corner of the street. What I am and who I am. And what light. God's day cannot hide. When you are in the day of God's day, the ray of God's day, you cannot hide. Because you shine in his day. The way we live shines in God's day. No one can hinder your victories. God's day attract victories and nobody could stop. When you live in the light of God's day, all things work. Oh, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. All things work in the light of God's day. Hallelujah. But when we are struggling with light and darkness, circumstances become what we pay attention to. Hallelujah. We pay attention to circumstances, events of living. Whenever the events of living is still affecting us, we are still struggling with light and darkness. The events of living should never alter the perfectness of God's day. Living in God's day, in other words, I am not affected by nothing life throws at our face. So what if that happens? Duh. God has already prepared something far greater inside of who I am. So it didn't work out today, it's going to work tomorrow. So, you know what? You're living in a fool's paradise. Uh-huh. They said that to Jesus too, so it's quite all right. <laughs> but the victory is in God's day. To be transported into God's day. 
if we find that we are still struggling with the elements of being in the light or darkness or living in darkness and covered up by light, we will realize that we can never ever live a victorious Christian life. It's not possible. It's not possible. The possibility is living in the light of God's day. The light of God's day speaks clearly of a life <coughs> controlled by the perfect plan of God for our lives. There are things about God's day that we have not discovered as of yet. In God's day, he makes enemies your footstool. Oh, hallelujah. I need God's day because I got some folk to throw under God's foot. Hello. Tell me I need to pour my, I need to put my balls under God's foot too. Mm. <laughs> I just remember that. I gotta drop. Somebody help me put my balls under God's foot. <laughs> yeah. God judges things far, far better than we can ever judge things. Because sometimes He will move them out just because you are in the light of His day. Glory, hallelujah. He'll make things so wonderful for you that you'll, it will shock you that, wow, this really happened? This actually happened? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody said to me last night, Pastor, you must really love your people. Because I'm up late, late last night, late into the morning, preparing for you wonderful people. So somebody said to me, because I was talking to the phone, they said, you must really, really love your people. I said, no. <laughs> it's not because I love them. It's because I'm given to serve them. And whatever way I can serve them, God is pleased. It makes no difference what I have to do to serve. And the length and the dimensions to go. Because that's in the light of God's day, to serve. The greatest among you serves everyone. The greatest does not have high seats or hierarchical position. The greatest serves. So when, he, when I explained, he said, oh, now I hear, I got you. He said, so I said, do you serve? <laughs> so you must really love me, not because I love them. It's because I'm given to serve them. It's all right that anything that I need to do for myself to put on hold, it's fine. I don't get it to, to get it because this woman of God is as faithful as can be. And the people that God put in my life is as faithful as can be. Because dealing with me is a very high responsibility. Because it demands so much that they have to always be cutting on corners just to ensure that this remains without any form of darkness. God put people around me to prevent darkness from penetrating my, my world. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what God does. He puts people around you to do that. And rather than submitting, we start pulling out because it's hard at times. It's God's will. It's God's way. Some God puts people in line to keep us in line. Because that's living in the light of God's day. It's because he's preventing darkness from intruding on his day. It's fine to have tough knocks around you. People that will treat you with tough, tough love. We need those things. Because if we didn't, we would just be thinking it's in the street by and by. There ain't no in the street by and by in this life like that. Because as long as we struggle with light and darkness, the results will be the elements of those things. But what God does, he puts people in our space that darkness will not penetrate who we are. Hallelujah. Because living in the light of God, discipline is a part of that. Yes. And God allows people to be in our lives to keep us disciplined. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Folks who have deficiencies of one kind or the other, whether emotional or financial, 
when the light of God comes, the struggles of those things cease. It totally cease. Have you ever had a huge bill to pay and didn't know how you were going to pay it? If you ever had a church with him, did it get paid? He put people around you to do it. He put events to line up so he could take the pressure of darkness off of your mind. <coughs> God put some people in our lives that will do just that, love you in spite of all that will happen because he wants to keep darkness away from your heart and mind. But rather than submitting, we reject and sort of fight against it. We, we just stay emotional baskets, struggling with being obedient, struggling with being honest, struggling with lying. Darkness. No good. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet.